Hi guys, welcome back. Um, so, sorry I've been a bit inactive over the last couple of weeks. I've been traveling and haven't really had time to sit down and research a project or even had time to really sit down and record a video. Um, so today I'm gonna to be talking about uh, one project and the industry they operate in, specifically Terra Virtua and the NFT space. I thought this was gonna be a bit of a short, punchy video, but it's actually gonna be a reasonably long one. So I'll try to put some timestamps in here when I get a chance. Anyway, let's get stuck in. So before we get stuck into it, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the NFT market and I'm gonna sort of jump in between the project and the market in which they operate throughout the video. So firstly, what is an NFT? NFT stands for non-fungible token, which means that it is unique, rare, relatively, and for the most part, indivisible. So in the same way that you can't cut, cut up and share a, you know, a really valuable baseball card or a rare baseball card and share it between your friends because it'll immediately lose value when you cut it, the same thing applies to NFTs for the most part. So why should you care? NFTs can basically prove that you own a digital asset 100%. They're transferable and obviously authentic. Primary use cases include art, gaming, VR, AR, digital real estate, actual real estate, event tickets, licensing, and real world assets. So there's actually a lot of interesting markets that sort of this, this technology can fill. Now, even though NFTs have been around for at least the past few years, due to the most recent resurgence in DeFi and the new sort of crypto hype, they're back in the spotlight with a lot of really cool projects uh, experimenting on ways to not only build a new um, niche, um, but obviously, you know, trying to sort of build this new nascent industry into something that can be useful in the real world. Although we know that the tech works for the most part, it's really important that we have a look at this from a human adoption standpoint, as well as business viability standpoint, which is where we sort of get started with the project. So we're not gonna go through, you know, all the different parts of the NFT sort of, you know, the NFT uh, technology stack or the various use cases. Today we're talking about Terra Virtua and so we're gonna be talking about digital collectibles, which is the space they operate in. The first pushback against an NFT collectible is pretty much who cares. But with the same breath, you can say that about any collectible. Really, who cares? Uh, there's, actually a scientific, there's actually a scientific reason for why collectibles have value and it's social status. So this is gained in three ways, respect or admiration, voluntary deference and prestige. Uh, in the case of what you know, the digital space is looking at, pretty much you're looking for respect or admiration or prestige, showing off these cool things that you have that other people don't have access to. This is biologically programmed into us and it's not entirely economic. Generally those that have a perceived higher social status uh, will live happier, healthier lives. And although it's not a complete zero sum game, it does fit into the standard construct of social hierarchy. So people who are you know, generally perceived as being of a higher status will generally have happier lives than people who are not. But I don't really wanna get stuck into the psychological lesson today. Um, if you wanna learn more about that, I've put some links below. Because social status means different things to different people, um, I might perceive something as being completely valueless, whereas a niche group might look at it as being something that's you know, you know, priceless. Um, in the same way that people who don't understand the value of Bitcoin perceive it as having no value, whereas obviously there's a significantly large community of people who have bought, owned, transfer Bitcoin and they have a higher perceived value than other people. So at a, as a thought experiment, for example, and I know this is technically impossible, but if you could prove that you had, you had a single Bitcoin that had been mined in the first block of 50, um, you know, of, of any of any of all the entire Bitcoin, Bitcoin blockchain. Now I know it's impossible, but if that was possible, you can obviously understand that although that Bitcoin has the same functionality, purpose, and use case as every other Bitcoin that's been created in existence, the fact that you can authentically claim that you own one of the first 50 in the first ever block, that will have a higher perceived value amongst people who, I guess, care about Bitcoin. Um, than every other Bitcoin that's in circulation. However, for a user that doesn't know or care about Bitcoin, they're not really gonna see the difference. So as an owner of one of those Bitcoins, you know, it would be arguable that someone who owned one of the first 50 would get a higher perceived social status because people would be like, oh my God, that's so cool, blah, blah, blah. And then I can promise you that if it was possible, that would be worth more than one Bitcoin. Another example of this is in gaming. 
where companies will sell aesthetic items or you know, visually pleasing skins that have no real impact on actual gameplay and are purely just to make your character have an, an additional flair or a sense of uniqueness between all this other sea of characters. Games like um, PUBG, World of Warcraft, uh, League of Legends, um, these all have you know, in-game purchasable items that do not affect gameplay, but will make you, I guess, feel better about the character you're playing, and maybe people sort of comment to you and say, oh my god, that is so cool, wow. Um, and people that don't play those games would not give a shit about those, those particular products. It's really only for the niche group that, that it exists in. Another example of sort of the fandom and collectible space is the, uh, is the business Funko. Now, they make those little pop culture um, caricatures from like, you know, Marvel movies and video games and things like that. Um, and that's a company valued at over $1 billion. And, you know, the, the rare, super rare pop, pop uh, characters can actually, actually be worth a significant amount of money because of their uniqueness. However, yet again, doesn't appeal to everybody, but does appeal to that niche group. So now that we've talked about the NFT market and then the collectibles market and then the psychology behind it, let's talk about Terra Virtua. What is Terra Virtua? Terra Virtua is a 2D and 3D animated NFT ecosystem that can be accessed via AR and VR, as well as being a marketplace for 2D and 3D digital art and collectibles. In their AR VR world, users can store and interact with NFTs that they own inside their own fan cave, which they can customize to display their collectibles. It's a pretty interesting idea. And I do like the idea of sort of integrating sort of blockchain with AR VR, uh, but we'll get more into that in a little while. So before I get into the nitty gritty of the project, let's talk briefly about its history. The project was originally founded in 2016 by Jawad Ashraf, I hope I pronounced that correctly, who is the current CTO who has been developing software in various industries since 1994. However, before work starting on this business, never really worked on anything to do with AR or VR or gaming for that matter. Now, I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing uh, because he's obviously a very experienced developer across a number of industries. Um, and then, but I think the one important thing to note is that from 2003 till 2020, he was working for a consumer incentivization app, um, which sort of shows that, um, you know, over that period, he was working on Terra, on, on Terra Virtua as sort of a side gig. Now, the CEO and the CEO are a very, very different story. The CEO came on board in 2017 and has an extensively long career in the gaming and VR space. Uh, from what I can tell, he's been in the gaming space from 2012 and VR since 2016 and has had multiple roles across digital sports since you know, 2012. And the business is very much aligned with Gary's experience and background and a similar story with the COO, very, very uh, experienced in the, in the gaming space, which is good because I think that's the direction they're trying to take the project. From a marketing and community sense, Terra Virtua has actually been pretty quiet up until about 2018. Uh, which is when it first created its Facebook page, and then it basically had its first set of tweets in June of 2019. So I'm not sure what they were doing over that time period. I can imagine, uh, I believe that they did have a, an ICO that didn't work out too well and then ended up being reverted to equity, but that's not a bad thing because most ICOs sort of didn't go too well in 2018 and 2019. And I think that you know it shows that at least there's that commitment um, to building the project whereas a lot of other founders would have just walked away. So that's a positive that they believe in what they're doing. So about Terra Virtua itself, uh, we've talked a little bit about what the project is in a, in a high sense, and then let's have a look at where the business is going into the future, and then whether or not it's, it's sort of, will have that survivability. Firstly, as stated at the start of the video, Terra Virtua is a collectibles market inside a, an, an, um, an augmented reality slash virtual reality world that you can display um, so sort of to show off to other people within that world. So the way that they've started this is by licensing digital collectibles from Paramount and Legendary Studios for, I think they started with The Godfather and then Lost in Space respectively. So they basically went to these studios and they said, hey, uh, we wanna start creating digital collectibles using your, your, you know, your IP. Uh, and then obviously the studios have said, yeah, sure, why not? And then what they will then do is then sell those to the market or they, they'll, they'll then convert those into NFTs that they can then sell to end users. And then the end users then put them in their fan caves or their Terra Dome or whatever. Now, my understanding is that there are various degrees of rarity that goes from common, uncommon, rare, special, legendary, and finally the highest rarity being platinum. This applies across the entire range of offerings. So whether it's their, um, their 
the NFTs that you know um, Terra Virtual create themselves, or from NFTs that have been minted from licenses like Lost in Space or The Godfather. There will be varying degrees of rarity across the all ranges. So pretty much as I understand it, um, the common level NFTs are you know plentiful or maybe even unlimited. Don't quote me on that. But there's a lot of them. So the you know it's more about accessibility than it is about increasing value. And then as you go up the rarity spectrum, you would hope to see maybe an appreciation in value uh, due to the rarity of some of these things. Uh, for example, I have seen on the online marketplace, which is pretty much a shop, um, that the one of the ships from Lost in Space is worth like 1,500 bucks. Now, the other thing is you can do is, uh, and I'll talk about it a bit later, but other NFTs, if you're a user and you wanna to try to sell them, there is an online auction house where you can start to auction off your acquired NFTs to other collectors, uh, hopefully at a higher price, but who knows in this market. <laughs> so it sounds pretty simple at this point, um, but with any you know crypto project, there needs to be a token, and we're gonna have a look at what the TVK token does. So there are three main functions of Terra Virtuous token, TVK. Number one is the Prestige Club. This is a membership type deal where you know you have to stake X many tokens and you'll earn rewards. It is multi-tiered, I believe, which means that the more you stake, the higher your tier level, and that access is more exclusive the rewards uh, depending on what tier you're on. Now, that's uh, I've got to say that a lot of companies did that in 2017, 18, and it was kind of shitty. Um, but thankfully, there's two other token utilities that will bring more life to this thing other than just that. However, that's just one, and it's not a bad idea. Number two is crafting. So it seems that if you want to be able to create your own NFTs that you can then put on the on the auction house. So you'd need to be, I mean, you can do a 2D if you're an artist uh, and you want to just you know sell 2D drawings or something. I'm just making that up. Uh, or if you're a 3D artist and you want to sort of create your own you know 3D. Um, you know NFTs that you can store and sell within the um, Terra Virtua ecosystem. You can do that. However, you're going to need some TVK to stake to get access to the developer tools, as far as I understand. Um, I haven't looked at it, but I'm pretty sure that there would also be a uh, cost of TVK tokens to then mint your digital creation into an NFT. Lastly, there's farming. So those of you who might be uh, familiar with the Meme Project. Um, Basically what you do is you stake your, your uh, TVK tokens into a farm and then I can imagine, I haven't seen it personally, but if it's anything like meme, you'll generate the equivalent of pineapples and then you can then mint exclusive NFTs that can only be, only be gained by farming. And because there's obviously a little bit of work that goes into doing that, there might be a degree of scarcity which then might create some level of value in the same way that meme token basically does. So it's an interesting offering and you can sort of see that there's a few different uses of these tokens that are already working on existing projects. So they've sort of combined them all into this, this one sort of ecosystem, which is an interesting way and it, be, it will be interesting to see how the experiment plays out. And I will just underline again that just remember, this is still an experiment. So as an overview, that's pretty much the project. And I think my biggest concern with, with this whole NFT space in general, but specifically Terra Virtua as well, is how many people are actually going to give a shit about it in 12 months time? People like to, you know, share, show off, you know, and, and are proud of items that they've earned in larger games because there's people to show them off to. Uh, for example, something like Animal Crossing has 11 million players, which is why in that game, player housing is so important because you can invite your friends over to see all the cool items you've, you've sort of acquired in the game and the way you've set them up in your house makes it very unique. Um, veteran World of Warcraft players who have items that are exceedingly rare or no longer even available in the game um, will proudly sort of wear these items or show them off so that, you know, they can gain that social status that we're biologically conditioned to want. People will also show off like unique weapon skins or character skins in games like Modern Warfare or, um, or League of Legends, like, you know, custom character models that have no real impact on the game but allow players to show their uniqueness or their status or to show that they played the game for a significant amount of time, whatever it might be, or might have been around for a specific event. But the biggest factor is the community that surrounds it, like more people to show off to is better than say, you know, only a small group. And unfortunately at the moment, I just don't see there being a big enough market um, for people who actually care enough about very, very niche um, collectibles that can only be displayed in one place 
and that place is incredibly unpopulated. The number of you know, Terra Virtue users at this time is excessively low, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, like it's only new, so you can't expect there to be a million and one players. However, how much of it is actually going to, you know, when, when they get the hype train and then people start going in and collecting this stuff, how long does that last? So for example, I'm just gonna talk about uh, CryptoKitties. So CryptoKitties, you know, was a game that came out uh, where you could, you could mint cats and then you could breed them with other cats to make more unique cats. And those cats would be worth, depending on their rarity, certain amounts of value. I think a cat that sort of looks like a dragon sort of saw, apparently sold for like $300,000 when the hype was sort of really, really big. However, fast forward three years and CryptoKitties now is trading, you know, less than a couple of thousand transactions a day. So to put it in perspective, transactions peaked at about 543,000 the week ending December 4th, 2017, have not even remotely approached that figure ever since. The average weekly transfers have been dropping and even in 2020, um, at the start of the year, we were at about just under 20,000 transactions per week and now we're sitting well under 10. In the last week, we've only done roughly about $5,000 worth of transactions have taken place on CryptoKitties, which the average price of a CryptoKitty is selling for 0 0.15 odd, or just about 0.1 of an F. However, in 30 days, there's been $176,000 worth of sales of CryptoKitties, which in all honesty, still quite impressive. But the whole idea of systems like this and platforms like this is that you're meant to sort of grow and then continue growing, not sort of go through a big peak and then just die. Um, and as we can see through transaction volume, although it's still happening, it's getting lower and lower. So the product is slowly bleeding. And as people exit, they're not gonna come back. Uh, so there's a big risk of that happening with something like Terra Virtua. So maybe CryptoKitties was, was too early for its time, uh, probably didn't have enough sort of functionality to keep people wanting to play with it. At the end of the day, it was still just an experiment. So it's really important that Terra Virtua does its best to sort of try to get people in, update it, and then make it gamified so that people want to keep playing it. Now, the founders do have a, a strong gaming background, so maybe that's the plan. Uh, but it's still a risk because, you know, we've sort of looked at the MMO market, and I hate to mention World of Warcraft again, but it's the longest running MMO for a reason um, because it's the most popular and has the most amount of players. And even then, you know, they'll drop player numbers after a new game might come out and the players will shift from one game, from World of Warcraft to another game. But then those players will always come back because the, I guess the um, imitation game is not as good as World of Warcraft. And World of Warcraft being the giant that it is, is able to update and then all those cool features that news games release, you know, can then be absorbed into World of Warcraft, which satisfies the needs of a larger player base, which keeps it going. I mean, it's been going for like 16 years now and there's been no other competitor. Now, Terra Virtua may very well be the, um, the World of Warcraft of the NFT gaming space, but I, I just don't think at the moment there's enough incentivize, like sort of incentivization for people to sort of, to push it past the fad or the, the hype stage. And then when we look at NFTs in general, um, at the moment, you know, we've sort of, we, we know that the collectibles industry is absolutely massive in the order of, I think, tens or hundreds of billions of dollars, depending on how big a scope you take. But if you have a look at the four biggest markets for collectibles, that is being cars, uh, militaria, like so old military stuff, um, books, coins, and stamps, so top five. Um, now, why are they valuable for people? Well, number one, they're old, they're rare. Uh, over time, their number diminishes. And in some cases, they have historical significance. So yet again, it's sort of like if you could say you had the first Bitcoin, that actually might be really impressive. Whereas saying that I have an NFT where there's only 100 great, but because they're on the blockchain, there's never gonna be less. Whereas over time, like really classic cars, they're gonna slowly dwindle over time as they get you know, you know, know, lost, written off in car accidents or whatever, and then they're gonna be less and less in time. So the big question to be asked is, will the demand for these NFTs outstrip their availability? And at the moment you can get you know, they're everywhere. You don't even need to do anything to get an NFT anymore. Um, access to them is, is easy. So will there be a digital collector's market? Probably. Um, it's, it's sort of the way that the industry is going. Now, will, is there going to be enough demand to support these businesses as they, as they transition from, you know, initial you know, experimentation to hype to then actually being able to be profitable enough to then, you know, sort of live through the tough times and all that kind of thing. 
And as you can see with CryptoKitty, CryptoKitties, although there was one sold for $300,000 and you know, you can set his demand and oh my God, but I can probably argue that that CryptoKitty isn't worth that amount of money anymore. And the guy who bought it, you know, fools and their money are easily parted. And I think another important point is that although there are, you know, collectible items for video games and things like that, like through pop, you know, the pop figurines from Funko, However, just remember that you can take that little, you know, if you change your desk or you change your setup or you move your house, you can take that, uh, that product with you. You can move that thing to your new desk or your new YouTube studio background or whatever. However, a lot of these NFTs that are gonna be available in a, in a domain like Terra Virtua is that they couldn't really be viewed in that, in that space. And so if Terra Virtua shuts down, yes, you will still own the NFT. You'll still own this 3D piece of art that you can view in Terra Virtua. But if there's nowhere to view it, where's the real value? Now, I'm sure that there's gonna be some explanation as to how that works, but losing the platform itself incredibly diminishes the value. Whereas the platform for physical sort of, you know, collectibles is the entire world. And the only way we can lose that, sort of lose those is if we all blow up. So in the same way that Bitcoins are valuable for their rarity, unfortunately at the moment, we don't really have the same thing with NFTs. They're plentiful, there's plenty of artists minting them. Anyone can really mint them depending on what platform you're using and they're, they're spread across multiple platforms. So really, uh, we don't know what artist's work is going to be, is going to be valuable or sought after. Uh, so really at the moment, it's a big experiment and gambling game if you're looking at this stuff. I really don't think there's gonna be a lot of NFTs that are you know, really gonna have any value in six to 12 months time, the same as CryptoKitties, it's all just gonna be garbage. And then when there's that you know, number one dominant platform, maybe, you know, for example, if Meme is gonna be the dominant NFT platform that you know, your original you know, Genesis Meme tokens or whatever, are, you know, the NFTs that they're originally minting now are gonna be worth heaps of money. But I mean, we really have to wait and see. Either way, so those are my thoughts. So TLDR, basically it's a really cool project. Uh, it's good that they've got a working product and they've got users and they've got people engaged right now. The big challenge is going to be keeping those users sticky and being able to generate enough income moving forward so that as this nascent industry is established that they can basically maintain relevance and then maintain those customers to have a profitable business into the future. Because otherwise it's gonna end up just being another crypto kitties fad uh, and the whole thing will die out. Anyway, thank you, see you on the next one.